in my head right now, I'm thinking a little bit about organizations and how organizations like to hide things for their own ego, the integrity of the organization. But one of the scariest things ever is when that organization is the government. What happens when the government tries to suppress some kind of heinous crime just to preserve its country, just to make people think, no, 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 we're protecting people when it's really not. Don't forget that organizations will do anything to preserve themselves. And that's exactly evident in this story. God, I hate to give it this name, but you know, if you've heard it before, you might be familiar with the name, the butcher of Garbia. Okay. I, I hate that because what do I say? Stop giving murderers cool names. The butcher of Garbia, the boogeyman, the bad boy, like all that. It's, it's a little, it's a little much, right? This guy, he's got a couple names. The media calls him the Butcher of Garbia. He calls himself Al Turbini, but really his name is Ramadan. For short in this, we're just gonna call him Ram. If you end up on my channel and I'm telling a story about you, you no longer get to have the identity that you picked. You're gonna get the identity that I assigned to you. And I was gonna call him just Al, you know, Al Turbini, but we're just gonna call him Ram. So in Egypt, there are a lot of street children. Street children essentially don't have parents. They don't have families. They are exactly what I just said. They are children out on the streets just trying to figure it out. Some of them make it to 18 and some of them do not. Some of them don't even make it to 12 or 13 or 14. Ron was not a street child. He came from like a regular family. And this family told him that he needed to go work at the train station when he was a child. So when he's about 12 years old, he starts working at the train station. And while he's there, this kid that calls himself Al Turbini, which basically means express train, and he starts bullying Rom. He starts fucking with him a lot, you know? And this guy, Al Turbini, he's a street kid. And obviously he's been through a lot. I mean, imagine that. You've got no parents, you've got no nothing. You, there's no rules, there's no nothing. Like you're, you're just an angry kid. And he's a little bit older than Rom. He's probably about 15 or 16 and Rom is like 12 and they're just working this job. And every day Al Turbini comes up and he's just talking mad shit to him. Taking his money, beating him up, whatever, whatever the fuck he does. Over time, the abuse starts to escalate between Rom and Al Turbini. And we talked about this a little bit in some videos that I've done in the past, but especially with people that don't know how to deal with boundary pushing, when somebody realizes that they can push your boundaries, they will keep pushing them over and over and over again. And so it's every single day that Ram is coming to work, Al Turbini is pushing his boundaries a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then it all culminates to him robbing him, beating up and doing whatever. And then there's one day where they are on top of a train, the top, the top of the express train. I'm gonna just give you guys a sexual assault warning here. And Al Turbini rapes him. He says, he tries to stand up for himself and he rapes him. And this, this is a street kid. He's like 16 or 17 years old. And after he does it, he throws Rom off of the train, just tosses his body off of the train like he's nothing. And he survived, but he had severe injuries to his eye. He's actually got like a lazy eye and his, his face is kind of like beat in. And this is what happened to him when he was a child. Who knows if he ever even like told his parents or anything like that? Probably not because that's not, a lot of abuse victims tend to hide these things, especially men. Especially men. Okay, I'm not gonna go too hard on this right now, but there's a lot of male sexual assault victims that will never, ever, ever say anything and it's changed their lives entirely. Okay, just, that's all I'm gonna say. I don't think that, Rom ever really told anyone what happened to him. Because what he decided to do was seek revenge. Rom, he decides that he wants to raise up an army of street kids. And so he's a little bit older now. He, he's much older. He's an adult now. And he finds these kids that basically had nobody, nothing, no families, no dads, no mother, no anything. And he kind of presents them himself as like a leader. And he creates this gang. They do a lot of different illegal activities. But the way, the way that you moved up in the gang was essentially by bringing a child to Rom. At this
this point, something else that was really interesting was Rom had told the street children to call him Al Trebini. He had named himself after his abuser. And clearly, this was a way of trying to take his power back. The wrong way, but that's how. And the children called him Al Trebini, and they had no idea what had happened to him or who the original Al Trebini was. And so that's what they do. They bring children to Rom. And every time they bring him a boy, he does the same exact thing to them that happened to him. He rapes them on the train, and then he throws them off of the train. This happened to over 30 boys and about two girls. He reenacted his trauma onto other people to get his power back over and over and over and over again. And after he would assault them and throw them off the train, sometimes that's how he killed them and their bodies would be run over the tracks. Or sometimes he would have them buried alive by the other children. Sometimes they wouldn't survive being thrown off the train and they would bleed out slowly in the sand alone by themselves. It's obvious to me, and I think it's obvious to you guys, that what was he doing? Reenacting his trauma, taking his power back by naming himself after his own abuser, and then going out and doing the same thing to other people. But what's evident to me is that after the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh time, did he really feel any better? Because he never closed the book on it, he kept doing it over and over and over and over again. In 2006, one of uh, Rom's little gang members was captured for something else. And he ends up telling police, listen, this guy is fucking raping people and then throwing them off the chain. If you, can you, you, you help me, I'll help you. I'll help you, I'll help you basically get him, right? And so the police hear this, this insane story. People described Ram as slow. I think it's because a lot of people looked at his disability and they looked at his eye and they just kind of were like, oh yeah, or maybe it was his demeanor or something of that nature. But really, even though he was manipulating children, this guy knew exactly what he was doing. Well, the police go in and they start investigating and they're like, he, he raped and killed 30 men? And then everyone around, they're like, yeah, Ram is a, uh, Ram is pretty slow. He ain't here to fly. He's kind of, they're like, he's kind of dumb. He ain't really do nothing. So the police are like, yeah, yeah, he looks dumb. And this is a pretty fucked up story. We're just gonna act like it didn't happen. Well, you know, he does, Ram gets investigated a little bit and he finds out exactly who told on him. And this boy is terrified. Like I said, he would bring in these street kids. They had no family. They had no anything. They had no community. The reason that they were even here is because this was their community. This gang was their community. It was their protection. And now this gang is looking for this boy. And he knows it. And it's not long before they find him. Ram does exactly to him what was done to him. What was done to all the boys that were brought before And I'm sure that when they caught this boy, it was 10 times worse than anything he had ever done. So after this, he's actually able to get away with his crimes for a little bit. And this is what I was saying about organizations that cover things up. It is so scandalous. So scandalous for the Egyptian government. How could this man kill all of these people? You know, the media is picking up the story. They're doing a lot of fear mongering. The butcher of Garbia. Young boys being taken off the streets, raped on top of a train, and then thrown into the streets, buried alive. Oh, they eat it the fuck up. And the government tries so hard to suppress this story, but they can't suppress this story. We never heard of some shit like this before. This is crazy. It's, it's super crazy. And this is something that actually happened. Eventually, they do catch Al. He's been on the run for a very long time. And the prosecutors question him. And he says that he was uh, possessed by a female spirit and he couldn't control it. 
That's his excuse. That's what he, um, that's what he comes up with. So maybe they were right. Maybe he wasn't the brightest, you know, crown in the box. Maybe he just wasn't a very smart. I don't, I don't fucking know. But that's basically what his story is. And after that, the prosecutors take him and his other right hand man and they sentence him to death in 2007. He spends about three years in jail, and then after that, in 2010, he was hung and actually executed. After this happened, something I thought that was very strange was a lot of people in Egypt commercialized the name Al Turbini, you know, the express train killer, the butcher of Garbia, because this was such a scandalous thing. Soon after the arrest, A widely circulated Egyptian newspaper reported some products in Egypt were being named after Rom's nickname, Al Turbini. Several restaurants in his hometown started selling a so-called Al Turbini sandwich, allegedly in demand by young locals. Sheep merchants gave the name Al Turbini to large-sized lambs priced more than 2,000 Egyptian pounds. Some drivers named their vehicles Al Turbini to attract customers. I mean, this is America in the 70s, commercializing serial killers, commercializing Ted Bundy, commercializing the Green River Killer, like it was fucking cool, you know? And maybe that's what we do sometimes as a society to take our power back, you know? Just commercialize the things that hurt us. I mean, shit, it's kind of what we're here doing now on the YouTube channel, I guess. Just less fucking gross The naming a sheep. Al Turbini, because it's a fat sheet and you want to sell it. 